Hey everyone, this is David Brown, and in this video I'm going to be talking about my trip to Hawk Mountain Sanctuary in Pennsylvania on November 20th, 2022, mainly showing the bird photos that I took and talking about raptor identification. A friend and I drove up from Wilmington, Delaware, so we left around 5.20 a.m., and we're at the Hawk Mountain parking lot by 7.00 and took a few minutes to put in tow warmers and get our things together and then we headed up to the north lookout which is about a mile hike we got up top the north lookout around 7 30 a.m and it was a beautiful day the sun was shining but it was really cold so i don't think the temperatures ever got out of the 20s and the winds were strong from the west northwest so overall it was pretty decent conditions for raptor migration but it was a freezing cold day this photo here is the view from the North Lookout. So here you're looking up ridge and when they're calling out birds, they actually call them out using these points on the ridge, like the knuckles on your finger. So this is one, then two, three, four, five. And on days with Northwest winds, the winds coming from the left-hand side from this photo, right? This is the North side of the ridge and the wind is coming across and hits the ridge and gets deflected upwards. And so the hawks can just ride directly along this side of the ridge, the north side of the ridge, with that wind that's deflected pushing them up from below. And so they just kind of glide right along the ridge. They don't really need to flap, they don't need to soar. They just glide with that wind pushing them up from below. So that's the general situation of why a place like Hawk Mountain is such a good raptor migration spot. And on the windy days, especially northwest winds, um, those are the perfect winds for raptors to be following the mountain ridges. On days with lighter winds, raptors might be more out over the valleys using thermals to get lift, right? Circling on that rising hot air and then gliding to make forward progress. But on days of northwest winds, they love to follow the mountain ridges, especially at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. And here I am all bundled up. You can see I have many, many layers on, including a lot of heated clothing. I have a heated vest, um, a heated scarf that I put on after this photo. And um, I actually wore heated gloves and hand warmers, toe warmers, anything you can do on a cold, windy day to stay warm. And of course, I have my signature orange hat, which is getting less and less orange every day. And here's another shot of me all bundled up. And you can see I did bring my spotting scope up relatively light one so not too bad to to carry on the hike up and you can see at, at hawk mountain you just basically find a rock to sit on um, so i usually bring a cushion to sit on um, but it's really beautiful view and kind of a fun place to hang out for the day we didn't have to wait long for the action to begin we got up to the north lookout around 7 30 and it was right around 7 45 that this golden eagle passed by and perfect morning light relatively close and it kind of popped out of nowhere I, I didn't see it coming um, none of us did I was still unpacking my stuff and I just happened to look up and there it was so good way to start today with a golden eagle a short time after that we had another eagle this one's an adult bald eagle that was relatively distant but you can you can see the uh, white tail and the white head as well here's a juvenile northern harrier that popped up pretty close to us and you can see that white rump patch that's one of the classic field marks of harriers and we can see the underside of the bird is this real orange color doesn't have much streaking on the upper breast that's how we know it's a juvenile if this were an adult female which we'll see one later but adult females have more streaking on the upper breast and they're usually a little more heavily marked in this patagial area as well and the adult females would look more whitish underneath rather than this orange color here we have another eagle and if we look at this we see that the head is relatively white still has some dark in it and if we look at where the white is here there's some white throughout the underside of the body and in this wing pit area and anytime we're seeing white in the body in the wing pit like that that's a bald eagle this is probably like a fourth year type bald eagle where their heads kind of look like an osprey they're getting the white head and white tail but there's still some dark in those areas and they're not fully brown on the underside. They still have some white patches. We had some migrating waterfowl, not huge numbers, but here we have a flock of Canada geese. Here's a common raven, and you can see how big that bill is. And you can also see the tail looks pretty long. 
Ravens just always look a little more stretched out to me. It's like you took a crow and grabbed the head and the beak and yanked and grabbed the wings and yanked. Here we have two bald eagles flying together. The one on the left is an adult. You can see that white head and tail. And it's a relatively large head. And the bird on the right, you can see, is basically the same overall shape. Another big head. But this is actually an immature bald eagle. You can see it's got some white in the back and maybe some dark on the head still. Um, but we can see that they're the same overall shape. A golden eagle would have a much smaller head than this. Here we have a male purple finch that flew over and on windy days it can be hard to hear the flight calls um, but thankfully these male purple finches are pretty distinctive with this raspberry coloration and also the tail shape on purple finches is pretty distinctive this little forked tail distinguishes it from some of the other more uh, some of the other similar species the only red-shouldered hawk of the day was this adult you can see the orange coloration throughout the underside in the black and white pattern of the wings and also the tail is black like a blackboard with thin chalk lines although here you can only really see one maybe two of the lines because you have the undertail coverts here if it fanned the tail out you'd see it a little bit better we had some nice groups of galls swirling around in the valley and this one came close enough to get a nice top side shot and um, the galls we would be expecting to see the galls that look kind of this overall shape and coloration are ring-billed galls and herring galls. Um, the galls that we saw were probably all ring-billed galls and on this one it came close enough we can see that ring on the bill to confirm that it is a ring-billed gall rather than the similar herring gall. Here we have the top side of an adult red-tailed hawk and we see the classic field mark where it gets its name. Here's another type of gall and when I first spotted these, I wasn't quite sure what I was looking at um, because of how pointed the wingtips looked. So I thought at first maybe they were shorebirds or terns, but as they came closer, I realized that they are Bonaparte's galls, which are the smallest gall we would expect to see at a hawk watch like that. Little gall is another species we get in small numbers in Pennsylvania that's even smaller than Bonaparte's gall, but Bonaparte's gall is the typical small gall that we see. And on the wingtips, we see that they have kind of this um, white leading edge to the wing. You can see it on both the top and the underside. It's kind of whitish there, but they do have black tips to the uh, primary feathers there. One of the things that distinguishes them from Little Gall. Little Gall also has a black underwing, so we don't see that on these guys. So these are Bonaparte's galls. Here's another adult red-tailed hawk. Here we have another eagle and we see a dark head, but if we look at the body, we see a lot of white throughout the uh, underside of the body and in the wing pit area. And again, that's something that you'll only see on bald eagles. On golden eagles, you won't see white in these areas. Here's a top side look. And again, we see this bird has a lot of white in the back. And again, that's something you won't really see on golden eagles. Some golden eagles show the tawny bar on the top side, but it's not this like really white that we see on the back of some immature bald eagles. Here we have another adult red-tailed hawk. And from this photo, you can't really see that the tail is red very much. It's easier to see that color on the top side, but we see a dark trailing edge to the wing. And that's something that only adult red tails have. Juveniles do not have the dark trailing edge. And we see that this bird has a relatively thick belly band. I would say this is on the more heavily marked side. These patagial bars look pretty dark. The coloration of the head looks pretty dark. So this is probably a northern red-tailed hawk, which is the Abieticola subspecies. And those are ones that nest way far north in the boreal forests of Canada. And that we see down through Pennsylvania in the winter. Um, so this time of year at Hawk Watches, and you'll see some more photos of heavily marked red tails. Um, it's an expected subspecies this time of year. So it's something neat to look out for on a cold day of hawk watching. Here we have a loon migrating overhead, and we had three loons. Um, we called them all common loons, and I guess that's the expected loon. Um, Red-throated loon is also a possibility, um, but I... Unless I see them together and you can tell that one is clearly a little smaller and 
thinner looking than the others. I have a hard time picking out red-throated loons, so I just call them all common loons. Um, maybe that's not the best way to do it, but um, if anyone knows any better field marks to do than that, uh, let me know. Here's a flock of ducks migrating high overhead. And from the coloration of some of them, we can see that these are mallards. You can see some of the, uh, the patterns of the males. Here we have another adult bald eagle. And here's another eagle where again, we see white in the underside of the body and then this wing pit area. When you see that, you should be automatically thinking bald eagle. Here we have a group of 13 birds split into two groups. We see that they're large white birds with long necks and no black on the wingtips. So these are tundra swans. If they were snow geese, they would be quite a bit smaller. The neck wouldn't look quite so long and they would have black wingtips and they would be flapping much quicker because of the small size. Here we have another adult red-tailed hawk. And again, we know it's an adult because of this dark trailing edge to the wing. It gives this wing a really nice outline. Um, the juveniles don't have that, so they're, they look overall more light colored, but the adults have this nice outline. And again, a fairly thick belly band, um, relatively dark patagial bars. The throat doesn't look super dark. So would we call this one a northern? Maybe, maybe not, but still a nice looking red tail. Here's a bird I spotted as I was scanning and this bird was moving about Mach 5. It was just like flapping like crazy and going super fast. We can see it's got pointed wingtips. So immediately we should be thinking Falcon and just from the really aggressive flight style and the quick wing beats telling us that it's a smaller bird, we can identify this as a Merlin. Here's another adult red tailed hawk. You can see the dark patagial bars and the belly band. Here we have a couple more tundra swans that came closer. Again, notice that there's no black at the wingtips. The wings are pure white. Here we have the top side of a bird. We can see pointed wingtips, so we should be thinking falcon on this one. And merlins, like this bird, often show these white stripes on their tail. So that's something you can look for on both the top and bottom, I believe. And here's an underside look at the same bird. And again, you can see those white lines on the tail. You can see the kind of dark vertical streaking on the breast. So this is a Merlin. Here we have a group of birds and these were kind of small to medium size. And we did see some ravens, but these are actually American crows. So we can see the tail shape is a little bit different. The head and bill isn't quite as large. Uh, it just doesn't have that really lanky look and just the way they were kind of swarming and flying, not really soaring, maybe struggling a little bit in the wind, having to flap. That lets us know they're crows rather than ravens. Here's a bird that could easily fool you, especially from a photo like this. You would look at this and say, hey, that head looks pretty small. Looks like a really dark eagle. You might be thinking golden eagle on this one, but there's a couple problems. Um, we do not see a golden nape on this bird, which I think we would be able to see if it was a golden. And the other thing is in the photo, although this would be hard to see in the field, this is where the photo helps where you can overexpose a little bit. We see that there's white in the wing pit area and kind of spread throughout the coverts. So this is actually a juvenile bald eagle. So you have to be careful sometimes, um, especially from a distance and when the bird is in shade, you could easily look at this and think you're looking at an adult golden eagle. But actually, when we get a better look, we see that it has the white in the wing pit area. And since this is a juvenile bald eagle, we see that the trailing edge of the wing shows no signs of molt. This is a bird that was born this summer. Here we have another flock of migrating waterfowl. And we see that they have relatively long necks, but shorter tails. They look dark overall, they don't look white. So these are just more Canada geese. See if you can figure out what this bird is. The one difficulty at a place like Hawk Mountain is some of the birds are below eye level and the camera has trouble locking onto the bird. It wants to focus on the background. So I never did get a in-focus shot of this bird. But the bird is moving to the left what we see here is a dark body and wings, but we also see a little bit of red here and maybe some white. 
Can you think of a kind of medium sized bird that has that pattern, a black body and wings, and then some red and white on the head? Yep, this is a pileated woodpecker. Like I said, the first golden eagle of the day was at 745, and it took until afternoon until we had the second one, which is this really nice bird. I can't remember if this was aged as an adult or not, but we see no white patches in the wings. Remember, most immatures will have white patches in the wings. Um, to age it for sure as an adult, we'd want to see the top side of the bird um, to confirm, especially the spread tail. Just make sure there's no whitish tail feathers remaining and um, confirm that it has a tawny bar on the top side which all ages except juvenile golden eagles show um, we also see the golden nape even in these relatively distant photos you can see the small head with this gold color on the nape which is the back of the neck and that golden eagle actually soared higher and higher and higher and then eventually glided on and we can see in this glide posture just how short that neck and head looks compared to the tail. The tail looks literally three times as long as the head. The head barely sticks out at all. So that's a good field mark for a golden eagle, whereas on bald eagle, the head sticks out more. It looks more evenly balanced between the, the head and the tail. Here we have a raptor, and this looks like a flying cross, doesn't it? Really long tail, so we know it's an accipiter kind of long lanky wings, relatively large head sticking out. We see orange barring on the underside, so we know it's an adult, either sharp shinned hawk or Cooper's hawk. But judging by the length of the tail and just how lanky it looks, the large head, and we see the blue on the top of the head stops and it has a pale nape. So we can identify this as an adult Cooper's hawk. Here we have another eagle and I would call this a fourth year type bald eagle. And these, I like to say, look like adults, but there's still some brown where they should be white and there's still some white where they should be brown. So starting to get that overall color pattern of the adult. And again, this is usually fourth year birds that show this plumage. I think there's some variation. So sometimes we say things like fourth year type, um, you know, could this be a fifth year bird? Maybe. Um, but this is kind of that classic fourth year type. And again, the head kind of looks like the head of an osprey where it's white with some black. And look at the top side of that bird. You can see it's still got some white in the back. Eh, some white tail feathers. Some of the tail's still dark. Or maybe these are more feathers growing in. I'm not really sure. But um, fourth year type bald eagle. Here we have a bird gliding overhead. Just from the shape, we should know that this is a beautio. When we look, we see dark patagial bars and a belly band, so we know it's a red-tailed hawk. And we see no dark trailing edge to the wing, and we see kind of a light brown tail with some banding on it, so we know this is a juvenile red-tailed hawk. And here we have another juvenile red-tailed hawk that shows the same field marks we looked at on the last one. Here's a group of ring-billed galls that sort of all climb together, and then they all at the same time started gliding, going down ridge as they continue their migration. So it was kind of neat to see them all um, gliding. It's almost like a kettle of broad wings or something, but they were ring-billed galls. Here's a closer look at some of the individuals from the same group. And a few more. And again, if you look at the wingtips, you see that they're kind of um, relatively large black areas with white windows, um, but it's a much different wingtip pattern than we saw on those smaller Bonaparte skulls. Here we have a large bird going away from us. Looks, looks pretty dark underneath, but the trailing edge of the wing is kind of a white or silver color. And we see a red head on this bird. So this is a turkey vulture. Here we have three large birds and we can see that they all have white heads and tails. So these are three adult bald eagles that were just messing around and playing out in front of the, the lookout. And actually there was an immature bald eagle that came in and joined them. So it was kind of neat watching four bald eagles interact. And then right after that, this bird popped up and this is a golden eagle. We can see some of that golden color on the nape, relatively small head. Not sure what this is. I think that might be some white in the base of the tail. So maybe this is still an immature bird. 
Um, well, we don't really see any white patches in the wings, so maybe an older immature. And I think this bird, they actually did not count as a migrant um, because it kind of came up and then went off to the north. So I think the counters did not count it, but it was different than all the other eagles we saw. So I counted it for my total, even though it didn't go down as an official migrant. Here we have the top side of an adult red-tailed hawk. And here's the underside of the same bird. And we see that this bird has a pretty thick, dark belly band. We see some of that red color dripping down from the throat onto the upper breast. Relatively dark throat. Fairly heavily marked patagial bars. So I would say that this is probably the northern Abieticola subspecies. Here's another adult red-tailed hawk. Again, from this angle you can make out the belly band. And you can also get a hint of the red tail. And yet another red-tailed hawk showing the same field marks. And once we got in the afternoon, the number of red tails started to pick up, which was nice. Um, things were just a little bit slow throughout the morning. Seeing a couple red tails, a couple bald eagles here and there, and the other stuff I've shown photos of. But once we got into kind of the mid-afternoon time, the numbers became more steady with you know, almost constant red tails and eagles and things like that. I'm not sure if it was just a slight change in the wind or what the actual difference was. Um, but the number of migrating raptors definitely picked up there in the last few hours of the day. Here we have a bald eagle that's almost a full adult. I might call this one like a fifth year type bird. You can see it's got the white head and white tail. Still a little bit of brown in the head though and you can see it's got just a little tiny bit of white still on the body and wings so probably next year this bird will look like a full adult here we have the top side of a bird and we see that white rump patch which is characteristic of the northern harrier we also see it has that owl-like face that facial disc helps it hear when it's hunting for prey relatively long tail and relatively pointed wings as well and we look at the underside and we see it's relatively orange underneath and no real streaking on the upper breast. So this is a juvenile rather than an adult female. Here we have a really nice looking bird. And if you go up to Hawk Mountain, you might know a guy named Dirk. And if Dirk saw this bird, he'd be all over this one. Look at those white patches in the wings. That's what Dirk loves to see. So this is a juvenile golden eagle. And I actually have a couple photos of this bird and we'll talk about why or how we know it's a juvenile. And again, juvenile means a bird that has its first real set of feathers. So for things like eagles, that means um, they're basically in their first year because they don't replace any feathers until they're basically one year old. So we see these big white patches in the center of the wings, no white in the armpit or wing pit area, no, no white on the um, breast, belly, we see white patches in each wing, kind of in the center area, and we see a white base to the tail. That's where we want to see the white patches for a golden eagle. Relatively small head with a golden nape. And in fact, on this bird, we can even see those white patches go through to the top side of the wing. And we know that this bird is a juvenile because when it was soaring and we saw the top side, there was no tawny bar across the top. Juveniles are the only age that do not show that tawny bar. So when we see that, we know that it's a juvenile, along with things like no signs of molt, completely white tail base, the white patches in the wings. They're all good supporting field marks as well. And one more look. This is just a classic juvenile golden eagle. Here we have the top side of an eagle, and we see it's kind of got a white tail base to it. But we also see that it has a large head, and the head is mostly white with some dark in it. We don't have any hint of a golden color, and we just see a big head with a huge bill, huge yellow bill there. So this is actually an immature bald eagle. And on the underside here, we see that there's some white in the wing pit area. Again, when we see that, we know we're looking at a bald eagle. And this bird has a huge crop. Again, the crop is just this the bulge in this area and it just means that the bird ate recently and you might even see some blood on the bill still and just another angle of the same bird and again we can see it's got a huge head and huge bill so that's a good sign for a bald eagle 
Here we have another really nice looking red tail. Look at the shade of the head on this thing. It's almost not even reddish. It's like almost a black color, just a really deep coloration. Big belly band, dark throat. We see that coloration dribbling from the throat onto the upper breast. Big patagial bars. This bird probably nested somewhere way up north. I would call this a northern red tail, no question. Here we have another red tail. Again, we see the same field marks, patagial bars, belly band. It's hard to tell what's from the lighting, how dark this one actually is. It looks like it's on the darker end. And like I said, most of the migrants that we're seeing, or at least a fair number of them this time of year are the more heavily marked ones. That's indicative of the Northern subspecies, Abieticola. Here we have another dark eagle and we see a golden nape on it, relatively small head. So this is indeed a golden eagle. Another look at the same bird. And again, you can get that golden color here on the back of the neck. No white at all on the underside of the body or wings. Here's another view of the same bird. And this is probably an adult. And adult golden eagles can look very similar to turkey vultures when they're going away and you have this kind of angle. Because if you look at it, you don't really see the head at all. We see the bill sticking out here, but um, this shape is very similar to the shape of a turkey vulture going away. You kind of have that two-tone coloration where it's a dark body and a dark leading edge to the wing, but a slightly paler trailing edge to the wing. That's why it's always good to pay attention and spot the birds when they're coming in, because if you don't spot them until they're going away, you just make things more difficult on yourself. Here we have another northern harrier. Again, notice that white rump. And this one is an adult female. And notice underneath it doesn't have that orange color that we saw in the juveniles. It's more whitish underneath with a lot of streaking, especially on the upper breast. So that's the sign of an adult female northern harrier. And we can even see a bit of the white rump here from this side view. Here we're looking down on the top side of a juvenile red-tailed hawk. So again, notice it doesn't have a red tail. It has kind of a brown tail with some banding on it. And a different angle of the same bird, we can see that belly band. And the juvenile red tails, it's a lot harder to tell between the eastern subspecies versus the northern. Um, whereas on the adults, it's a little more straightforward. Here we have a bird that's kind of in a funny posture because its wings are all the way tucked back. But what do we see? We see a very, very, very squared off tail. It's a relatively long tail, so we know it's an occipiter. And I think this is just a classic sharp-shinned hawk tail. I mean, it doesn't get any more classic than this. This is probably a male sharp-shinned hawk, so a real small one. You can see this really small head, kind of a cute face, um, you know, with the, just the way the eye and the small bill look. It's not a fierce look. It's a little more cute looking. We know it's an adult because of the orange barring on the underside. Here's another shot of the same bird. We can even age it as an adult just based off of the eye color. You can see that red eye. And on the adults, we see that the blue color runs all the way from the top of the head onto the back. There's no pale nape. So that's another indication that this is a sharp shinned hawk rather than a Cooper's hawk. And again, we see that super squared off tail. Here's another adult red tailed hawk. And here's yet another adult red-tailed hawk, again, fairly heavily marked. And here's another adult red-tailed hawk, taking a look at the top side. And I'm not sure what this white feather here is. That's just something out of place. It's not a, a field mark to use for anything. And like I said before, the red tail numbers really started to pick up. So I have a lot of photos of them here. And an another top side view of an adult red tail. Here's another adult red tail that's fairly heavily marked. We can see this kind of big blobby belly band kind of has a bit of that herringbone pattern to it. Dripping from the throat onto the upper breast, pretty dark head color. And this bird turned nicely and caught the sun. So it actually looks a little paler underneath than it really is just because it's overexposed a little bit from the bright sun hitting it. Um, but kind of a really cool photo to get the the darker background, but then the bird just completely lit up as it turned and got hit by the sun. Here we have another golden eagle. And when the sun hits them, this golden nape just really shines. Relatively small head. 
looks like there's no white in the wings of this bird. So maybe an adult or an older immature. And this bird actually came by right at four o'clock, which me and my friend, we had said around 3.30 that we'd only stay until four. But then when this bird came through, you know, the action was still going. So we stayed a bit longer. And just a few minutes later, we had another golden eagle. And in this photo, the bird actually has its head turned and it's looking up over its shoulder. And we'll see why in a moment. But let me also point out that this bird has some white patches in the wings. So we know it's not an adult. Um, this is probably a sub-adult bird. And if we saw the top side of the wing, we would see a tawny bar that would confirm it as a sub-adult rather than a juvenile. Again, juveniles do not have that tawny bar on the top, but the subadults and adults do have it. So if you have a tawny bar and you have white in the wings, you know it's a subadult. Okay, now let's figure out why he's looking over his shoulder. The bird we just looked at is down here on the left, and he was looking over his shoulder because there was a second golden eagle following closely behind. So here's our friend we just looked at going by, although with the wings in shadow, we don't see any of the white patches. And he was closely followed by the second golden eagle that passed a little farther out, so the photo quality is not as good. But those were number seven and eight for the day for golden eagles. So really nice total of golden eagles. Any day you see a golden eagle is a good day, but it's always fun to go to a place like Hawk Mountain and be able to see multiple golden eagles. And to end the day, we had a small flock of cedar waxwings fly by. And here we see them a bit better as the sun was hitting them. And here's a view off to the north at the end of the day. And here's me at the south lookout on the way back down the mountain with a big smile because I had just had a great day of hawk watching. And one last photo as it started to get dark. And if we look at the hawk count report for the migrant raptor totals for the day, we had 11 bald eagles, three northern harriers, one sharp-shinned hawk, one cooper's hawk, one red-shouldered hawk, 29 red-tailed hawks, seven golden eagles, plus the one non-migrant, so eight total, and two merlins for a total of 55 migrants. And if we look at the report, they said the weather was clear to partly cloudy with gusty west-northwest winds at 8 to 18 miles per hour. Again, for the eagles, they give the times. So bald eagles, the time, and then A for adult. TY would be third year. J for juvenile. I for immature, which would be any age younger than adult, but maybe you can't tell exactly which year. And then on the golden eagles, they didn't list all of them, but you can see A for adult, J for juvenile, and SA for sub-adult. And a big thanks to my friend Caroline Fagley for being the counter for the day, as well as David Barber, Scott Morrison, and Sean Grace, who also were helping in the pit. And if we take a look at my eBird checklist, had 27 species and you can see all of the totals and all of my photographs. If you so choose, I'll put a link in the description. And uh, just a, a really good day. Overall, not a ton of songbird activity this time of year, especially on the really windy days. Like I said, we had a couple purple finches, a couple gold finches, things like that. Blackbirds, wax wings, a couple chickadees hanging out. Um, but the real star of the show this time of year is the raptors and especially things like golden eagles and red-tailed hawks. I put up a Facebook post and shared it to a couple groups trying to um, give an explanation of the day, but at the end I put a paragraph talking about how these kind of hawk-watching days are difficult because you're getting up early, you know, a few hours before sunrise, maybe you're driving a couple hours, carrying a lot of equipment up the trail to the, to the north lookout, sitting in the cold and wind all day, your eyes are tired because you're scanning all day, you're exposed to the elements, you're cold, you're shivering, you're getting blown around by the wind. It's really tough on the body, but really hawk watching is like nothing else, the chance to be able to go and it's almost like you're in an alternate universe where the only things that matter are the wind and the mountain and the birds and you look at the weather forecast, you see that it's going to be good winds and you say, 
I'm going to bundle up. I'm going to go up there and find a rock to sit on. And I'm going to wait for the show to unfold around me. Because I know that if I go up and I spend the day up there, I'm going to see a lot of cool birds. I'm going to get a lot of good photos. And you never know what you're going to see. So that's what makes hawk watching fun. It's what makes it my favorite kind of birding. And I try to do it as much as I can. Of course, we're coming up on the end of the hawk watch season. Here at the Hawk Watch in Delaware, we go until the end of November. Hawk Mountain will be going until mid-December. A couple Hawk Watches, like Wagoner's Gap, go until the end of December. But we're definitely coming up on the end of the fall migration. Um, but it's really been a spectacular fall. I've done a lot of Hawk Watching. And hopefully we get a few more days of northwest winds, maybe another cold front before the end of the season to have a few more days to see more golden eagles, more red tails, maybe even some goshawks. So I hope you're able to get out birding and hawk watching. And if not, I hope you at least enjoy living vicariously through my videos and photos. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.